Paul Romer, in the 1980s, puzzled over the following type of data. Here you see growth experiences of three countries. They're just examples, but they illustrate something important. Chad grew between 1960 and 1981 by minus 2% per year. Singapore grew by almost 8% plus 8% per year. And the Philippines were like in the middle, and they actually grew like the, the world as a whole. So you see huge income gaps opening up over the course of only two decades. This has staggering consequences for human welfare. And Romer concluded that likely technological growth was behind the long-run economic growth observed in these different countries. So he asked himself, what explains this technological growth in market economies? And the crux was to understand ideas, he thought. Ideas for new technology. Where do they come from? And his vision was to build uh, a framework where ideas give rise to new ideas, which give rise to new ideas, propelling growth over time. So what kind of a product is an idea? He had to come up with a new way of thinking about goods and services. And I'll try to illustrate this here with a rectangle. And so he, <coughs> he thought of normal goods from the, the textbooks as rival goods. Here's an example of a nice uh, dish of Swedish meatballs. That would be a rival good. Uh, it's rival because when I eat the meatballs, nobody else can eat them. Not very deep. But uh, here's an idea. An idea is a non-rival good. This is the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and when I use it, and people use it all over the world at the same time, I don't prevent anyone else from using it. They can use it for free. That's a very valuable idea. But it's not the kind of ideas that markets provide. Here's another idea. What is this? This is uh, computer code, but you can't really see that it's computer code. Why? Because it's encrypted. So there's a, a dimension of ideas, which is that can be excludable or non-excludable. The theorem cannot be excluded, uh, but a com computer code, code can. And Romer realized that it's the excludable type of, types of goods that can be provided by markets. Here's something in between, somewhat excludable. This is the recipe for the Swedish meatballs. Uh, <laughs> it's in Swedish, so it's, it's uh, hard to understand for uh, most of the world's population. So he focused on this part of the rectangle. Ideas are non-rival. For market production, they need to be partly excludable. Restricting access is key, but it's also tricky because restricting access means that there will be monopoly power, and we know there are problems with monopoly power. So Romer incorporated this new paradigm, this new way of thinking about goods and services into growth theory and built a simulation model, much like Nordhaus's DICE model. So 